Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Hello, my friend. Welcome to the program today, the Friday edition here at Bible Tract Echoes. Thanks for joining us. My Bible is sitting open right now to the book of 2 Peter in chapter 3. 2 Peter chapter 3, I hope your day is going well. I hope your heart and mind are already preparing itself to be in the Lord's house this coming Lord's Day, and that today and tomorrow, you and I will prepare ourselves to just worship God in a corporate manner as is so wont to do. That's what we're going to be doing for all eternity, doing some corporate worship. We ought to practice that that skill now. Amen. Well, if you can, not only get your Bible open to 2 Peter chapter 3, get something on which you can take some notes. There are going to be three key words to help unfold the verse before us today. I've got a gospel tract in my hand. This one's entitled, I'm Keeping the Ten Commandments. I'll highlight that gospel tract here in just a minute. Let me begin this way, though. During my younger years, uh, having a week of prophecy conference at your local church was not an uncommon thing. Often the prophecy speakers, that at least the ones that we had come, had these massive charts that were painted on large uh, curtain-like material. And these charts were then hung on a wire across the entire front of the auditorium. And as a youngster, I sat in wonderment as God's prophetic plan was preached and the charts were explained. Well, today, of course, we have better teaching tools, but I'm not really sure that God's people are better informed on God's prophetic plan. I say all this because today we have a look at a verse which deals and describes God's final plan for our present physical earth. Our physical world will be destroyed, oh, not by an atomic bomb or not by some environmental disaster. Our planet will be destroyed and God will make a new heaven and a new earth, but it'll be done by fire. All of this is part of an encompassing time period known as the day of the Lord. And that's what's before us today. Now, please get your Bible and join us as we're getting ready to look at a very critical truth that is ahead for us. In the coming month here, as you're hearing this broadcast, in the coming month of October, I'll be preaching in Rogers City's Michigan and Kingsford, Michigan. I'll also be part of a share in North Carolina. And finally, I'll be preaching in Leola, Pennsylvania. I say that just so you know that we are busy out in the local church churches trying to share the ministry of gospel tracts and Bible tracts. We're trying to share the gospel of Jesus Christ and hopefully just make God's people more effective in telling the gospel. If my coming to your church is something that interests you, please contact our office. We'd love to get your church onto our schedule. Well, I mentioned gospel tracts here a moment ago. Uh, Do you know what a gospel tract is? A gospel tract, and that word tract is spelled T-R-A-C-T, a a gospel tract is an evangelism tool. It's a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. The one on my hand is entitled, I'm Keeping the Ten Commandments. This is a very practical, useful tool because so many people have in their mindset that keeping the Ten Commandments is a method that God gave for help us get into heaven. The better we are, they think, the better we are at keeping the Ten Commandments, the more likely we will be to get into heaven. Do you know that's just the opposite of why God gave the Ten Commandments? The law was given to bring us to Christ. The law, which includes the Ten Commandments, was given to show us how sinful we are and how much we need a Savior. Here, this gospel tract lays out why the Ten Commandments were given 
It lays out with clarity that the Ten Commandments cannot save you, and it lays out how to receive Christ. It's a powerful tool. You're going to find great use for it in your personal evangelism. I'm keeping the Ten Commandments. Be ready, please, at the end with pen and paper ready. When my announcer gives our contact information, you can then use it to give us your name and address, and we'll send you a free sample packet containing one each of all of our English gospel tracts. Be ready to do that. You can just go to our website, which is BibleTracksInc.org. Well, if your Bible's open to 2 Peter 3, verse 10 says this, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with a fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. That's our verse for today. Let me just begin with that phrase, the day of the Lord. Now, really, good, godly teachers have a a debate, and there's room for the debate about when exactly this prophetic time period called the day of the Lord will begin. For me, I understand that the day of the Lord begins with the rapture of the church age saints, and it ends with the fiery destruction that we see here in verse number 10. And in between the rapture and this fiery end, there will be a seven-year time period called the tribulation at the end of which Christ will return at his second coming, and he will set up his 1,000-year or his millennial reign here on earth, that he will be here personally and rule and reign. This will all culminate in Jesus letting Satan have one final rebellious time period, and then this fiery scene that we find here in verse 10 will take place. Now, as I deal with verse 10, I'm going to emphasize three things. Jot these down. We're going to talk about the surprise of this day. We're going to talk about the scope of the destruction. And then finally, the scorching as the method used by God to destroy the world. Three words, the surprise, the scope, and the scorching. Are you ready? First of all, let's talk about the surprise of the day of the Lord. On one of the final teaching times that Jesus had with his disciple just before he was crucified, he dealt with some prophetic issues, and this day of the Lord was part of that. In Matthew chapter 24, Jesus said that the first universal judgment that we saw in Noahic flood, that caught the ungodly then by surprise. But then he goes on to say in verses 43 and 44 of Matthew 24, he Jesus said that the next worldwide judgment will catch sinners then by surprise. Jesus said to his disciples, be ready for in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. If I were to turn over to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 2, there the apostle Paul says this, and I'm reading now, for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord cometh as a thief in the night. So again, I say that the day of the Lord begins by unsaved people, that those that will be alive on the earth at the time, these unsaved people will be caught by utter surprise that God is coming to judge sinfulness. That is the surprise. But now let's talk about the scope of this end, the scope of this final destruction. Just how much of the present world is God going to destroy? You remember in the flood of Noah's day, all the sinners died. And you remember, if you've done any reading at all, that the topography of the world dramatically changed because of the flood and the bursting forth of waters beneath and the moving of the continents and so on. But at the end of God's final judgment, all the earth and the heavens are going to be destroyed. Again, look at verse 10 in your Bible. It says, the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. But the verse goes on to say that the earth will be burned up. So 
Verse 10 here in our passage talks about the elements melting with a fervent heat, and these elements apparently refer to the building blocks of our physical world, things like the atoms and the molecules and so on. The things that make up our physical world, they are going to melt away due to a great heat. So all the earth will be destroyed and the heavens or the atmosphere around our planet, it's going to to be gone. So far, we've got the surprise of the day of the Lord when it begins. It's surprise on sinners. Secondly, we find the scope of the judgment here, the second final judgment that God brings on sin. But now the scorching part. Verse 10 here ends by saying that all of this present world will be burned up. Back in verses 5 and 6 of the chapter, we saw how that God designed the world in such a way when he made it so that water could be used to judge sinners at the time of Noah. Then in verse 7 of the chapter, we also saw that God has made our world and reserved our world for another judgment. This is the whole idea that's been being scoffed at by the religious teachers called false teachers or apostates. They deny that judgment will ever come. Here in verse 10, we see that it will come and it will be a second time by fire. If I were to turn over to the book of the Revelation, chapter 21 and verse 1, that chapter opens up with these words, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea. That word sea there is S-E-A, no more sea. Jesus said in the gospel of Mark chapter 13, he says, heaven and earth shall pass away. But he goes on to say, my words shall not pass away. Years ago, a pastor friend of mine made this statement. He says there's only three things that will last forever. The word of God, heaven and hell, and the souls of people. I need to repeat that. This is a succinct thing for you and I to get into our peanut butter brains. There are only three things that will last forever. The word of God, heaven and hell, and the souls of people. In light of our verse 10 here that all this earth and the heavens around it are going to be burned up, the elements will melt with the fervent heat. There will be a coming judgment and eternity after that will begin. In light of all this, tell me, are you and I investing in eternal things or temporary things? Oh, to be sure, you and I must do some investing in temporary things. It's called being ready for retirement and having money to put new tires on the car and all that. There is importance to that. But friend, how much are you and I investing in things that last forever? Are you presently investing in the souls of people that will end up either in heaven or in hell? My announcer is about ready to come back on. He's going to give our contact information. We want to put tools in your hand. They're called gospel tracks. They will help you invest in things that are eternal, things that are so important that God Almighty sent his only begotten son, that we through him might be saved. There is a way to be rescued from the coming judgment. It's in the person of Jesus Christ. Get the track from us. Jot down our contact information now. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Track Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.